All right, everybody, welcome to our online service today. I hope that you have had a great time this Christmas season. Um, but I also just want to understand, uh, I also understand that sometimes Christmas season is not easy. I mean, this could have been a really hard season for you, whether someone's passed away or it brings up tough memories. Um, so whether this Christmas season has been phenomenal or whether it's been difficult, my prayer for you is that Jesus has revealed more of himself to you in it. Um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time in the Word today. This is going to be one of the shortest sermons you've ever heard at Vertical. So get excited. Uh, we're going to give you more time to spend with your family or friends today, but it's important for us to be in the Word as we finish out this year and look forward to what is coming next year. So we've been in this series called Available, and it's been looking at how Jesus is available to humanity and what that's meant to us, how it has absolutely changed the game of life. It has changed our lives, and it means He's still working today. So I encourage you, get out a notebook, take some notes, because while this will not be a long sermon, it will have some key points that I really encourage you to go talk about with friends or family or maybe your vertical group and really start to process and think through some of the things that we're going to cover today. And maybe you'll even have questions. Feel free to email me. I'd love to set up a time. We can talk about it over coffee while you drink that and I find maybe some tea or water or something else. So let's dive in to the scripture today. We're going to start off in John chapter 16 verse 7. John chapter 16, verse 7, if you want to write that down. And it says, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. An Advocate is another term for Holy Spirit. And we talked about this verse a little bit a couple weeks ago. But this is so important. Jesus is telling his disciples, his followers, it's actually good for me to go away. What a puzzling thing it must have been to hear Jesus, your leader, saying, it's really good for you if I go away and you don't see me anymore. That had to be mind-boggling. And if we're honest with ourselves, it's still hard for us to hear today. Jesus, what does it mean that it's good for you to go away and Holy Spirit to be sent to us? Why is that so important. Why do you need to go so Holy Spirit can be available? Let's look at that today. And so verse 13, if you skip ahead a little bit in John chapter 16, verse 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And so with some of that language, it can maybe be hard to process or keep up with it. But there's two really main things that Jesus is revealing to us in these verses. And the first is is that Holy Spirit comes to guide us into all truth. It's Jesus saying that I've made this availability for you to have a connection point with the kingdom of heaven. I've, I've made an availability point for you to be connected to me. He says, Holy Spirit's not going to speak anything that he has not heard said. And so Holy Spirit is like this lifeline, this availability to hear, to be told what Jesus is saying in the kingdom of heaven right now. It's this deep connection point that when we are saved, Jesus can absolutely still communicate with us that we have this deep connection to our true home, the kingdom of heaven, because of what Jesus has done, how he's made Holy Spirit available to us. And this language, this terminology, if you haven't heard it before, can be a little bit bizarre, a little bit difficult. You're like, what is happening? You mean Holy Spirit can be inside of me and I can hear from Jesus because of that? Absolutely. That is what Jesus is teaching us here. And then the second thing that's so important is Jesus is saying in verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine, and that's why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And so that's, that's telling us that when Holy Spirit's been given to us, He's going to reveal to us things that are known to Jesus, but then we can learn. 
We're not going to stop learning, stop growing, stop becoming what Jesus has just when we get saved. We talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago, that our pinnacle's not when we're saved, not when we're born spiritually, but there's so much more life in front of us. And Jesus is telling us, Holy Spirit is so essential for us to experience everything that Jesus has for us in that life spiritually. And so let's look at now how Holy Spirit sets us apart. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 is a verse that I've kind of talked about a lot from the pulpit, but I want us to look at it specifically today. It says, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us. He put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. And that's really interesting that Jesus is saying, hey, when you give your life to me, when you become a follower of me, Jesus is saying, when you make me the Lord of your life, I'm going to send Holy Spirit into your life. I'm going to set it in your heart, your soul, and it's going to set you apart. It says, talks about how it's his seal of ownership on us. Holy Spirit is almost like our passport, our our, our, our uh, you know, social security number. It's our identification that we belong to the kingdom of heaven now. And that's a really you know, elementary way of trying to explain one of the facets of Holy Spirit. But when we are marked, when we're set apart, we have the seal of ownership, when we've been anointed by Holy Spirit, that's saying that we belong to the kingdom of heaven now and not the kingdom of this world. It makes us different than who we were when we just existed in the world. Holy Spirit is this marker that we're not dead in our sins anymore, but we're alive in Christ Jesus. Because again, Jesus is the one who sends us Holy Spirit. And when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, he's, we're being told that sets us apart. We're now anointed to do what Jesus wants to do in and through us. We've been marked that we're now a, a citizen in heaven and that Jesus can do what he wants to do in and through us. And it's guaranteeing what is to come because there's so much more than just what we're going to experience in this life and so it tells us because of what holy spirit's going to come in and do in our life that we're not going to be the same person anymore we're marked now to be different holy spirit is what's been sent because we're not supposed to stay who we were before we gave our life to jesus that sin that shame those things we were trapped in that person that we were that we were dead in our sins is supposed to go away. And this new person is supposed to be birthed because of what Holy Spirit can do in and through us. Because what Jesus is, is doing is what he's saying is, now that you've given me your life, I don't expect you to go be good enough in your own power. Have you ever experienced that as you try to follow Jesus? That you keep trying to be good enough, you keep trying to do the right things, and, and sometimes you fall short, it doesn't work, it can even be frustrating at times. And Jesus is saying, because you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be able to do it in your own strength. You can't, and I'm gonna send Holy Spirit to help you. I'm gonna anoint you to do what I want to do in and through your life. And maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, and you're right now, you're struggling to do it on your own. You're trying to fight through the things that are holding you back. You're struggling with the shame or guilt, and, and these scriptures are here to tell us that Jesus actually has a different way for us. That if we're willing to confess our sins and say, Jesus, come be the Lord of my life, lead and guide me, Holy Spirit becomes available to you to go, there's a different way to live life, and Holy Spirit can help us. The third thing that we want to look at is Holy Spirit's fruit is available to us. And Galatians 5 tells us more about this. If you want to write down in your notes Galatians 5 and chapter 6, I really encourage you to go read both of those chapters. It gives a lot more of an example and fullness to this text. But we're going to look specifically at Galatians 5 verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. I encourage you to underline or highlight verse 25 there. But there's a lot of things we need to unpack. Those who belong to Christ Jesus crucify the flesh with his passion, passions and desires. I think that's an encouraging verse in one sense, and maybe you didn't see it that way, but I do, because it reveals to us even after we start to follow Jesus, we can still have some of the passions and desires 
of this world, of our flesh, that those sins we struggled with before we came to know Jesus, it's telling us those things can absolutely still exist after we get saved. Those things that you wrestled with and why you maybe came to Jesus, you realized, I'm really struggling with this and I need Jesus. It's not that those passions and desires go away. It's that Holy Spirit has now been made available that we don't have to follow those passions and desires. Because before Jesus, what option did you have? It's just our flesh. It's just those passions and desires that exist. But when you give your life to Jesus and Holy Spirit comes in, He's now saying you have a different opportunity on who you sow to, who you invest your time in, who you give your focus to. Is it your flesh? Is it yourself? Or do you give your focus and attention to Holy Spirit and what's available to grow in your life? You know, joy, peace, kindness, self-control are all things that can come from Holy Spirit who Jesus has made available to us. And so right now, if you're struggling, if you're looking back over this past year and going, man, I've... I've messed up. I've made some of the same mistakes. Like I'm doing some of the same stuff I did before I gave my life to Jesus. What I'd encourage you to do is look and go, are you really giving your focus and attention to Holy Spirit who Jesus has made available or have maybe things got distracted for you and you're putting a lot of you know attention on maybe things you can try to do in your own power. And I would encourage you that we should always do our best. We should always give our best to God, but we should also interact with Holy Spirit who's been made available to us by Jesus. And those fruits of the Spirit are things that can really help us be everything Jesus wants us to be. Jesus wants you to be a person of joy. Jesus wants you to be a person of love. Jesus wants you to be a person of kindness. Jesus wants you to be a person of self-control. And he goes, you can't do that on your own. You can't do it on your own. And I'm going to send you Holy Spirit that if you will submit and allow Holy Spirit to work in your life, those things can be grown. And so as we look to this next year, how available are you back to Holy Spirit? How how have you opened yourself up and said, Holy Spirit, I want you to grow those things in my life. What What is needing to change in your life this coming year for Holy Spirit to grow more of that fruit in your life? Maybe it's just the first step is just asking Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, won't you please come grow joy and peace and self-control in the fruits of the Spirit more in my life this year. It's just asking Holy Spirit to do what He's been sent to do and then making ourselves available back to Holy Spirit. Because Jesus, we've just looked at all these texts, Holy Spirit's come to do that. Holy Spirit's been sent to do that. But are we allowing Holy Spirit to do that work in our life? I wonder if we, maybe we haven't been taught that Holy Spirit's been sent to do that. Maybe we don't interact with Holy Spirit. Maybe we kind of push Holy Spirit to the side. We don't really think about Holy Spirit. And we're missing all these benefits that Jesus has sent to us to be available, that he wants us to have to be everything that he is looking for us to be. And that leads us to that last part of the text, verse 25. Since we live by the Spirit... Let us keep in step with the Spirit. And that's one verse I really want us to think about as we close out this year and look to next year. Am I someone who lives by the Spirit? Am I someone who keeps in step by the Spirit? Are those things that can be said of our lives? Is that how we define our life? Am I living by Holy Spirit? Or is Holy Spirit off to the side? Is Holy Spirit not really talked about? Is Holy Spirit not really thought about? Holy Spirit's not really engaged with? Am I keeping in step with the Spirit? Because remember, if you look at what we're told in John 16, we're told that He will guide us into all truth. Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, is sent to guide us into what Jesus wants us to do. And if we're ignoring, if we're not engaging, if we're not listening, we're missing that availability that Jesus has sent to us. So the fourth point, the last point I want us to look at is are we available. We've talked through this whole series about how God's available, Jesus is available. We've talked now about how Holy Spirit is available. Basically, the whole Trinity is available. But now I want us to look at as we close out this series, are we available? We've seen all the scripture supporting how Jesus is absolutely available today. Holy Spirit is absolutely available today. But are we available? I think it's been very clear that Jesus wants to work in and through our life. 
He wants to use us to bring honor and glory to Himself. Holy Spirit has been sent here to bring honor and glory to Jesus. And He wants to do that in and through our life, but are we allowing that to happen? Are we doing the things Jesus is looking for us to do? Are we a vessel for a Holy Spirit to work in and through? I want us to close out looking with Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. If you want to write it in your notes and go back and read this whole chapter, I encourage you to. It'll help give even more context. What's happened is Peter and John have actually gotten in trouble for healing somebody. And so we'll pick up the story in verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, you might want to underline or highlight that, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Look at verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You want to talk about a verse that re-describes to us Jesus is available. He's the one name that we can be saved by. He's the one hope of the world for humanity. Verse 13 when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Look what happens in verse 8. Filled with the Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit starts to move in and through their life, verse 13 is the culmination of all of that. They're noting that Peter has courage. This is the same Peter that denied Jesus. When they said, don't you know Jesus? He's like, not me. I don't know what you're talking about. And now filled with Holy Spirit, Peter's a different guy. He's a different guy. When we are marked by Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit's working through us, we're different and people will take notice of that because there's something beyond ourselves at work. It's the Spirit, Holy Spirit that Jesus sent us. He's now got courage. But look, they, they notice that he's unschooled and ordinary. It's this interesting conundrum that when we get saved and Holy Spirit is sent to us, it's not that necessarily things physically change for us. It's not that we all of a sudden get a degree from Harvard or, you know, all of a sudden we, uh, you know, look or talk differently or anything like that. It's that there's something at work beyond us, and it's because there is Holy Spirit. And so they saw that he's got courage, but they also saw he was unschooled and ordinary. You know, one of the things that's so important to us at Vertical Church is this idea that we want to raise up leaders we want to raise up 1,000 leaders locally. We want to raise up 23 leaders globally to be sent out. And what we think of leaders here at Vertical, what I'm talking about when we talk about leaders is someone that's allowing Holy Spirit to work in and through them. We have an unwavering belief about what we just talked about today, that Holy Spirit in and through you can influence the world around you. It's not by your own power, your own strength, your own schooling, your own looks anything like that because they just said they were unschooled ordinary guys but holy spirit working in and through them people took note of that and that's what we're talking about when we're looking for leaders is someone who goes holy spirit won't you work in and through me to do everything jesus wants to do in my life i submit to you jesus and i want you to work in and through me i want to influence the world around me i want to point people to you jesus and holy spirit absolutely is available and can help us do that. And so when you try to tell yourself, I'm not a leader, like I haven't gone to enough school or I've not done enough of this or I don't have the right looks or I don't have the right personalities or whatever you try to tell yourself, remind yourself with Acts 4.13. Peter and John were unschooled, ordinary people who allowed Holy Spirit to work in and through them and people took note. And so that's what I want to encourage us to do as we come into this next year and we're looking to try to be more focused to say, I want to be a leader for Jesus. I want to give my life and say, whatever skills, whatever talent, whatever fruits of the Spirit, whatever I have, Jesus, I offer it to you. I submit to you and I want you to come work in and through me. And I want, to I want you to use my life to point people back to you, Jesus. 
because your life is not insignificant. You're not unable to be a leader. You're not unable to influence the world around you because if you've given your life to Jesus, you have Holy Spirit. And when you have Holy Spirit, you can be someone who people take note of because of what Jesus is doing in and through your life. Don't sell yourself short. Definitely do not sell Jesus short who sent Holy Spirit and is available to us today. And so as we close out this time, I want you to ask, am I being available to Jesus and what he wants to do in and through my life? Am I available to Holy Spirit who is going to say things that he's heard Jesus say, who's going to want to guide me into all truth, who's going to want to help me bring honor and glory to Jesus? Am I being available? And maybe there's some things that need to change in the way that you live your life this coming year to be more available to Jesus. Because we know that he wants to work in and through our lives to bring honor and glory to himself. I don't believe he's lacking any power, any authority to work in and through us. And so I encourage you, as you close out this year, talk with friends, talk with family, talk with your vertical group about the importance and power of Holy Spirit being available to us to accomplish what Jesus wants to do in and through you and I. I thank you so much for your time, Vertical. I love you. I'm so thankful that I get to be here and serve alongside so many incredible people. We have seen God do some awesome things at our church this year. It has just absolutely increased my faith and expectation that He is not done, that He is working and He is moving. And also as we close out this year, maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. And as we've talked through these scriptures, you go, I want that in my life. I want Holy Spirit in my life. I want to give my life to Jesus. That can happen today. Right now, you can absolutely say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I want to make you the Lord of my life. Please send Holy Spirit into my life to let me be everything you want me to be, Jesus. And if you've done that today, send us a message, send us an email. We want to encourage you. We want to rally around you. We don't want you to do life alone anymore. We want to celebrate with you and we want to help and encourage you. So Vertical Church, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've had a Merry Christmas. I hope you have a Happy New Year. And I can't wait to see you as we start off our year in 2022.